Hi, I'm Shannon from HouseImprovements.com. Today's video, I want to show you a fairly typical scenario where you're renovating a room. In this case, we're doing a kind of a typical 10 by 5 bathroom. Uh, so you've renovated the room, totally gutted it out. Uh, there may have been no vapor barrier at all before, or you've damaged it beyond repair, or uh, maybe it's just not the right product anymore, so you want to replace it. Uh, so we're going to basically upgrade or replace the vapor barrier in this room. And uh, for this room, we've got one outside wall and then the ceiling. So in our case, uh, the wall, this was from another video that we did, and we had actually framed this window and stuff from the outside. Uh, and when doing so, we had to kind of replace the vapor barrier as best as we could, but we did it from the outside. Now that's a little tricky. And uh, now that uh, I've had the chance to expose the wall on the inside of this room for this project, uh, we just removed the vapor barrier altogether. Uh, for the ceiling, because of the age of this house, what it was is just a wax paper. And then there was a paper-backed insulation as well in some spots. In fact, you can still see that on the, on the edge there because I didn't replace it. Um, so I, I tore that right down. Uh, just had the whole ceiling right, right open because everything got changed, some electrical and insulation and everything. So, so uh, enough of me jabbering about that part. Uh, some things that you want to think about. Obviously, uh, you can see I've got in the ceiling here, I've got some uh, vapor barrier pockets. This one's around what will be the exhaust fan. These two are around an area where there'll be lighting put in. Okay, so I've I basically built a little pocket there so the vapor barrier will be continuous once uh, it gets all sealed up. As well as down here in the uh, shower tub area, there's going to be a wall niche put into the wall here. So before the unit goes in, I've ran the vapor barrier in, in behind that little pocket to uh, be sure that uh, that all works. And yeah, somebody's going to ask, well, what about insulation value right here at the back of the niche? This home has uh, two inches of styrofoam as well on the, on the outside of the house. So so it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, so get your poly bags all kind of in place. And also it's a good chance to look around at any gaps and cracks like you see there was some up here and uh, you know noticeable draft coming in so I sealed those all up as best as I could with uh, some spray foam too just to kind of stop the draft more than anything. The vapor barrier will contain it but it's nice to stop it from coming in altogether. So I just kind of went in. You can, if it's cold out or whatever, you can actually feel those spots pretty easily with your hands. So it's easy to find where you need to give some extra attention. Now with the with the poly, because we're inside of another room, and we don't have an existing poly that's sticking, you know, behind these where these interior walls butt into the exterior, <coughs> we're gonna put our new vapor barrier across the face of the wall and also around the corner onto these framing members and the same thing on the ceiling. So it'll come across the ceiling and down here two or three inches. Now my vapor barrier is oversized right now, but it will get trimmed up. And uh, the reason you want it to be able to go onto the walls is that's where I'm gonna seal it with the acoustical caulk. Instead of trying to seal it here with acoustical, uh, you're kind of defeating your purpose because if I seal here, this gap all the way around here will let some air in to this room. So if I move my acoustical caulking bead down to these areas, that uh, seals up, contains all that draft still up in the attic area or the wall space, the cold zone. So, so uh, that's why I'll bring it down when I actually do the sealing or do the, yeah, the acoustical seal. Uh, I'm just trying to explain as much stuff as I can right now just so you kind of know what's going on as we go. So I've rough cut my uh, my vapor barrier a little oversized to the room. Now be sure that you're using the proper product for your area. Uh, basically anywhere that I know of vapor barrier products have to be stamped and approved to be used as a vapor barrier. You can't just use any random poly. It, it needs to be an approved sub, substance or uh, approved product. So, so I've cut it roughly to size, and I've also uh, measured out uh, my ceiling's about eight feet here, 
and I measured about eight foot three and I put some marks. Some marks here because I'm gonna do the wall and the ceiling all in one piece. So this just gives me a reference to where that corner is there because that's where I'm gonna start to hang it to get going. So it's gonna be really hard to see what I do because of the small room and uh, tight spaces initially to start. But basically what I'm gonna do is get inside of this poly and I'm gonna have the ceiling um, length of the poly draped back over my head and it'll of course hang down to the floor hence why you're not going to see. But what I'm, what I'm doing inside of there is I'm taking my, I'm going to take my marks here up to that corner and get some staples started. So the poly's basically uh, hanging and that's a place to start. Then I'm going to work my way out across the room along the rafters, putting staples and stretching the poly out as straight as I can with uh, hopefully not too many wrinkles in it. Once I get out a little ways, we're going to change camera angles and get you back in this corner so you can actually see what I'm doing going that way. Uh, so, uh, it really doesn't matter on the type of stapler you use. I'm using hammer tacker type stapler. So, uh, you know, about quarter inch staples, three eight staples, that'll be plenty. And I've just got that in my pocket. I've got a knife for any cutting I might have to do. Use a really good uh, sharp new blade if you can. It'll really help you out. Um, yeah, that's about it. So I'm going to get myself inside of this plastic and get myself arranged and get it tacked up there and started and then work my way across the room. Okay, so I've basically got my cocoon hanging there and uh, we'll probably get the camera moved and you can have a look from that side. So you can see I'm trying to keep it as wrinkle free as possible, but you know, the more things like these vapor bags I've got hanging down, the more stuff you got in there, the more places for it not to lay flat so um, just thinking here there's something I thought of I was going to tell you oh in these corners I'll, I'll go to this side in these in a corner like this you want to make sure that you've got enough poly there that it you know it isn't spanning across like if this was it's already pulled tight when you go to drywall that that could cause you some problems so make sure there's enough there that it'll go right back into the corner so and that's a little, kind of a little tricky until you get used to doing it to get it figured out. But just something to think about so you don't end up with a real tight corner and uh, have to, um, you know, cut it and patch it or something. And as I'm coming to these uh, vapor bags that I had, uh, sometimes you just got to pull that other excess poly inside just kind of fold it in as you're going and just keep working your way across the room Okay, so you can see, like I said, I've got some excess here. The, the roll was eight feet wide, so I just, I didn't bother trying to cut it down to six feet or something. Uh, it really doesn't matter what hangs down. It's going to be pretty much waste anyways. Um, so just to make life easier, and you don't have to, but I'll go along and just cut this off, you know, maybe four to six inches hanging down, just so it's a little more manageable when I 
I'm up there using the acoustical sealant. Um, so really the same thing down the wall, now that we've got it hanging in the corner behind you. Uh, just work your way down the studs and, and pull the poly smooth, so I guess I can show that too. Okay, so really uh, I'm doing the same thing, bringing the poly down the wall. Um, basically you want to staple about every couple feet if you have to put more in because the insulation is dropping down or something then put more in but every couple feet should be plenty. You're just kind of spreading it out same as we did on the ceiling. Now I mentioned before where we're putting the acoustical sealant here and up at the top. So I don't want to staple this flap right at that spot because otherwise I got to rip it off to do the acoustical. So I'm always stapling far enough back that I can pull this out. Of the <coughs> excuse me, pull this out of the way and uh, put some acoustical on there. So anyways, we'll just uh, finish stapling this off and then I'll show you some acoustical on the bottom and uh, one of the cutouts. I'm just going to quickly trim off the excess that I have left. I, you might have noticed I trimmed all the rest off camera. Okay, so for the acoustical, and you can watch our other video. We have another video. Uh, I believe I'm doing a basement uh, vapor barrier. So we're, you know, we're doing an entire wall sort of thing. So. Um, so it'll it'll go into more depth on all the ceiling and stuff but as i mentioned before for your perimeter acoustical up there and you also need acoustical down here in the uh right down in this seam just make sure it's pretty clean but right right down at the joint where the floor meets the wall is the best place for it and then if you're getting any draft underneath the wall it's sealing that up so And this stuff has no mercy. It'll get on you. As careful as you're trying to be, you're going to get some on you. Uh, if it's your first time using acoustical caulking, just uh, be very wary. Uh, whenever I'm done using the tube for a few minutes, I always stick it over somewhere out of the way, in a wall cavity or someplace like that where I'm not going to get any on me because it tends to ooze out a little bit, some brands. And yes, I know if you push this little button, it takes the pressure off, but doesn't always work for all caulking so if you get the tube too pressurized up so get your acoustical in there just force the uh, poly right down into the corner of it and just go along and get uh, a few staples in there to hold it down as close into the poly as you can just like that okay and it really is the same all the way along there now for, uh, we'll just do this opening since I'm right here. For something like this, I generally will use uh, the tape. So uh, depending where you are, uh, the blue tape is usually preferred for vapor barrier. So it's, it's really like a, a, a house wrap tape, sheeting tape. You, you're probably most familiar seeing it red, but uh, use the blue if you can, if it's available to you. So what, it, what I need to do here for this opening so that I can seal it up is I need to cut a hole in this poly we just hung and then pull those flaps that I had uh, in that opening there uh, through so I can tape it up. So the trick here is not to cut and slice the, the piece in behind you otherwise you just got a leak that you got to try to find and fix. So, so just try to cut along here without cutting the other piece just cut cutting the perimeter once you get enough open you can kind of reach in and pull the other stuff out of the way if you need to okay so we've got that out of the way now I can pull all these flaps that I had in here 
around to this side and I'm going to throw a staple in just to help hold it in place. So I'm overlapped over the wall poly that we just hung. Depending what you're putting in these openings, you might need to make sure your corners are not too jammed up with excess poly. In my case, I've got a little bit of space that I don't have to worry about it quite as much. So but I just try to fold it in there as flat as I can. And these staples are just to kind of hold it until I can get some tape on it. So it's just kind of held in place. Okay, super simple like that. Then you take your uh, tape for sealing it. You could use acoustical, but this is a good situation where I'm taping plastic to plastic and this tape really seals well to that. Uh, not so well, this tape doesn't stick so well to wood, so that's why I use acoustical on all the other areas. this off so it's out of my way. Okay, so you just want to make a really good tight seal between those two pieces all the way around. Just be careful when you're cutting the tape that you don't cut the poly in behind it. Okay, so pretty self-explanatory, but you can see more of this type of thing around electrical boxes and that sort of thing in our other video as well. Okay, so then just go around, make sure that you got no lips there where it didn't get, where you didn't overlap onto the, onto the uh, two pieces of poly. And that's all you need to do around that. Now around a window, it's very similar. So we've got a window here, I wanna cut it out. This window was installed and it's been spray foamed. So there's spray foam, I think you can see through the plastic there. Um, in the uh, space between the jam and the framing. So I'm gonna cut this plastic out just around the outside edge of the uh, window jam. And this is super typical for any renovation you're doing where you're cutting around windows and uh, maybe even an exterior door or whatever. Okay, so you get rid of that. Now I use the tape in this situation as well, and I'm not gonna do the whole window, but I'll just show you. I'll just take a small piece here. So I'm taping the poly here, just to the edge of the, of the vinyl window. Uh, so the reason for that is you're making a complete seal. Now I do have spray foam, so it's really not 100% necessary. I probably could just put acoustical around this framing and stick it into that and a few staples and I'd be fine, but uh, it never hurts to be over, over sealed around windows and doors. So what I do is I tape the poly to the vinyl window frame, window jam I should say, but you need to make sure you don't get this too close to the edge so that when you put your trim on, none of this is exposed. It sometimes doesn't come off plastic real well, it'll leave some residue or some color behind. So just kind of feel your way to where you need to be. the tape in there and I'm just up onto that this is about three quarters inch of an inch this jam and I'm up on there maybe a quarter of an inch and that's all you need and that stuff will stick to that like crazy so once you've got that all on there give it a good rub with your fingers and that'll make that seal so of course that'd be all the way around so so uh, same thing as what I did here and all the penetrations in the roof in the ceiling and uh, of course the acoustical all the way around. So like I said, we do have another uh, vapor barrier um, video 
and it's been out for a while now but uh, we'll put a link in the description for you and if you want to just watch that and pick up any other little tips maybe you're not doing such a small area uh, the only other thing I can mention to say on this room I didn't have to do this in one piece I could have had a seam up there but less seams the more messing around so if I can do it in one piece I always try to do that so okay so uh, hopefully this was helpful and uh, if you like what we do here at House Improvements please click on the thumbs up button there below uh, subscribe if you aren't subscribed maybe you've just stumbled across us here and uh, liked what you see um, uh, we have a forum so you can go to the forum and ask any questions you you can leave a comment about this video down below and uh, yeah just follow us on social media and if you really want to do a little extra you can also check out our patreon page thanks a lot for watching